All right, hello, hello. Can you all hear me? We're gonna try not to have tech issues this time. Can you all hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Cool, cool. So can we talk about that like Sienna beat drop? Our video editor is absolutely stellar. Can we give him some love in the chat for that amazing trailer? Alrighty, so welcome to our developer stream. I'm doing things a little bit differently today. Normally we have streams every other week, but because we are releasing on the 15th, we have a stream this week, a developer stream this week. Um, you'll see a community stream two weeks from now, so we're kind of restarting the schedule. Normally I have my script in front of me, but my printer ran out of ink, so if you see me looking to the side, it's because my script is kind of on screen in front of me, so we're going to try to work that way a little bit. But hello and welcome back to our monthly developer stream. For those of you who are new here, my name is Akshi. I'm a community manager here at Fat Shark Games. I'm personally based on the East Coast. Fat Shark is based in Sweden. Um, if this is your first rodeo, we host two streams a month from the Shark Tank. We rotate every other week between community streams and developer streams. Uh, community streams are a cozy little campfire where we talk about all things community and developer streams like this one is where you're going to hear from some devs, talk about the content, talk about some patch notes, some balance, and, and get some news on what's going on in Vermintide and what life is like as a game developer. So. Of the cosmetics that you saw, which one is your favorite? I think you all know which one my favorite is. The, the Sienna pressure cooker is probably my favorite. I just love the armor and the new outfit and the chainmail. Looks like it's split down the middle. Everyone likes something. These are really good cosmetics. I was actually really excited when I saw them. And I was just like, oh, the community is going to love that. All right, so this is anniversary week. So if you haven't played a quiet drink yet, and now's your time to go and get some bugmans. Make sure you don't fall on the floor. You are allowed three until you get hung over. Just don't topple to the ground, be a little careful with the alcohol. So that is our weekly. And throughout this week, we are going to be previewing content. We have some dev blogs for you. Uh, we have information to share. And also we have some streamers collaborating with us. Moop Shark will be streaming an anniversary stream uh, Tuesday, March 8th, which has already passed, and through Thursday, March 10th. You can watch his VODs if you haven't already. Uh, JTC Live will be streaming today and Saturday, starting at 9 p.m. CST. Fu will be streaming all week from 6 p.m. CET, and What Magic will be streaming on, or streamed Sunday, um, at 5 p.m. CET. So you can go watch his vods. There are giveaways, and giveaways will be happening this week, both on the Twitch streamers and also on our social media. So, this update releases March 15th. You will receive QOL updates, as well as the cosmetics. And Twitch mode will return. We know you guys have wanted Twitch mode. It is going to come back with this update on March 15th. So you all can get your Twitch game on. I know some of you are just Twitch mode fanatics and that's all you guys play. So, you guys will be able to play Twitch mode again. Now, we know that there had been shade reworks and sister reworks, which we'll get into in a little bit. But we also did some reworks that we haven't mentioned yet, that I'm going to get into some here. We have the much-awaited Illusionist rework. So the illusionists can no longer touch players with most of their actions and that they are now easier to kill. So you're not like battling five of them at once and just like, okay, well, that's the end of the run. So it's going to be more fun to play against. Um, we have also tweaked shield shatter 
It now reduces max stamina by one for eight seconds when striking block, and that has been re-added to Chaos Spawns and Minotaurs. So play these when they come out and let us know how they feel now to play against. And we have a little bit of weapon tweaks here. Let us talk about Moonfire. So the Moonfire and Hagbane now deal increased damage over time damage on finessed hits. We've removed the area of effect from Moonfire bow charged shots and reduced their damage profiles. Charged Hagbane attacks now apply area of effect poison on every bounce when using the Ricochet talent. And Battle Wizard, when applying stronger damage over time with Lingering Flames, uh, with the talent active, now overrides weaker damage over times. Now, the larger part of this update that we're going to get into now is our QL previews. And we're going to talk about some of what is going there, and I'm going to walk you through what's going on. So give me a second to move my script to the left side of my screen. And we will see these updates. Alrighty, can everyone see me? Can everyone hear me? Cool, awesome. So the first thing you're going to see is that we now have a unified UI. So to provide the best user experience for a more streamlined interface for updates, which is for you and also for our developer team to not have to update two interfaces at once so we can concentrate on more updates for you all, we've decided to merge into a single unified menu system for all players and platforms. Uh, moving to a unified UI is beneficial for implementing new features to the interface, such as the features that we're about to get into. Um, as well as any future additions and changes to the interface. Um, the old legacy interface remains available in the options menu on PC. So if you are like, mm, this is a little bit too much to get used to, you can go back. It's OK. You can go back if you need to. Um, and at this time, you can still see changes uh, via mods like before. But the legacy menu at this time won't receive any newly implemented features or future updates from us. So we're depreciating the older UI. But of course, you know, we're going to be listening to your feedback as we roll this out. Let us know how you prefer this unified UI, um, your thoughts on it, and we're going to keep track of that feedback and see where we're at after this period of updates. Next, we have what you've all been waiting for which is a branch off of No Wobble. It's called Melee Camera Movement. So if you go into Options, you will see Camera Movement on Weapon Impact, Camera Movement on Weapon Swings, and Camera Movement on Other Actions. Now, I have them all off, but you can choose your level of movement. So if you want a little bit more immersion, but not as high as the default would. You could put it on low, lower, or lowest. And it's very customizable, so you can do as your preference. You can have normal camera movement on other actions. You can have it disabled for abilities. You can have it disabled for dodging. Uh, you can have it disabled for incoming hits, or you can just have it off. So I have everything off. Works great. So we now have also a detailed UI. As you can see at the bottom of my screen, you now see your damage numbers um, or your health bar numbers. When you have teammates, you're going to be able to see their ammo. You're going to be able to see their cooldown times. You're going to be able to see their health numbers. Um, this is an offshoot of numeric UI, so it takes influences from it. And this new option gives you the choice to add more details for health and ammunition values in the in-game HUD. We have a kill confirm crosshair, which is similar to Pixel's mod, where this new option gives you the choice to add more details for health and ammunition values in-game, 
And you would get little different colored ones when you have a kill. You can also customize it. Here. And you can choose whether you want elites and above, bosses and specials, elites and specials, specials only, all. So you choose what's important to you. We also have, for those of you who enjoy playing with your friends and taking photos in game, or maybe just flexing on people, we now have social wheel emotes. So these are character poses that can be triggered from a second wheel that's adjacent to the social wheel. So I'm gonna hit next page, which is E. Um, and these can be cast directly from the shortcut key. Um, this is you, but you can also rebind it. And you will be moved to third person camera. So which one do you guys wanna see? Let's use pose. And if you press E, you can remove the interface so you can take pictures with your friends. You guys can pose back to back. And make some cool photos. Or maybe just taunt that assassin that you just killed who'd been sneaking around for the past 30 seconds. Next, you will have the new manage your career inventory so you're gonna go here and you can choose which career you want to manage let's say i want to manage merc and you can confirm that now here you're gonna see that i'm managing mercenary but i'm still playing sister of the thorn you now can choose which character you want to manage without swapping out so let's say i want to give him a mason sword and I'm gonna give him a handgun, and then I can go back. And again, you'll see that sister is highlighted in greed. I'm still playing sister. I can go to battle wizard and choose a fire sword, a bolt staff, and I'm just gonna choose something at random here. And this trinket. And then when I leave, I'm still playing sister, but I'm now equipped with new careers on what I would like to play. So I don't have to go through the loading and waiting period and going back to heroes to kind of manage my inventory that way. You can now just do it with whatever character you're playing on. Um, changes here also do affect the bot loadouts. So if you want to equip your bots, you also don't have to switch anymore. So you guys can now be the efficient inventory masters that I know you can be. So we also now have a persistent ammo counter. So when you switch, you can now see how many ammos you have all the time. So I'm on melee. I can still see that I have one shot on the Moonfire bow. Uh, let's move this to a longbow just so you can see. So you can still see I have 19 shots. So it doesn't matter if I switch or not. Oh, I am in the way. Yep. There you go. There you go, there you go. So, in switch. And you always have your ammo counter there. Next, you can also use brought prioritization. Um, So if I want to go to heroes, which, hmm, manage bot hero priorities. So I can choose, this is your order, and poor, poor Sienna is, you know, at the bottom and not the used bot. So let's say I want Sienna to be always there. I can move her right up here. Move Kruber down. And now we have a new bot priority and you can see which heroes you've selected through this icon here and you can also move this down okay 
You can also, if you, I don't have a lot of deeds for this, but you can also, if you have too many deeds, you can now clear them from your inventory. So while we do have a very large inventory system, if you've been playing this game for a while, you can find yourself running low on inventory space. So you can now clear your deeds if you have too many deeds uh, to put more room into your inventory to use at your disposal as you wish. Oh, I crashed, unfortunately. <laughs> There's the tech issue for the day. There's the tech issue for the day. I'm going to go through the rest really quickly so we can get into the developer stream. <laughs> You can also have streamlined weapon upgrades. So this is similar to um, armory. So you can now see an overview of what you have currently equipped, its rarity, and its melee or ranged weapon. You can now display the properties of your weapon, the trait. You can upgrade your weapon now without having to go into the crafting menu. And you'll also have an overview of the stats, strengths, and weaknesses of your weapon. Yes, so you can put equipment on your bot on your bots through um, through equipped items on other careers. You still need to reroll the stats if you don't like them. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna go see if our developer is ready and we will talk about Shade and Sister the Thorn. So I'll be right back. The mods will not be unsanctioned on the 15th, by the way. You still have, you still have your mods if you would like them.
Alrighty, so today I have with me Carl, who is one of our game designers. If you remember, he was the one who said he tried putting in Salt Spire in a steam tank on our uh, Warrior Priest stream, but you know, it didn't, it didn't, he didn't quite fit through doorways. So this is our, our emperor of our game design team, Carl. <laughs> Can you all hear him okay? He says it has no sound. Oh. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Test? Hello? Yeah, it was on my end. It was on my end. Is it working? It should be working now. Yes, you're good. You are good. Okay. Cool, so... What exactly does a game designer do? How do you shape how a game is made? Oh, uh, right into the questions. Uh, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> we have a very, like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a coworker dancing in the background. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. Okay, so uh, what a game designer does, um, I, I mean, uh, so how, how do I how do I phrase this? Um, so very very high level sort of what a game designer does is that we sort of try to move um, the ideas of the team and uh, what's sort of required to create into an actual sort of feature into the game that be like um, making sure we have a vision sort of what we want to achieve in more sort of applicable terms to to the team sort of make sure everyone understands what we're trying to do and uh, like yeah make sure we are on track and also sort of be responsible of sort of knowing the ins and out of uh, what the feature we are working on is like trying to achieve uh, so anyone in okay so i'm getting from production here is this better i hope so <laughs> Okay, no, but um, yeah. Uh, did you get that? I I, I assume you you got uh, most uh, of I it. But it, yeah, yeah, we're making sure making sure like uh, uh, sort of we stay on vision and uh, we are sort of the font of knowledge when it comes to uh, what we're, what we're trying to create. So anyone in the team or like your feature team that you're working on uh, can can ask you uh, what we're doing, and we will make sure things go along smoothly. What is the process of balancing a game like? How, how is it different from a developer perspective, from a player perspective? Um, I, I, I mean, <laughs> besides being responsible for, <laughs> for very great decisions, uh, I mean, balancing is a, it's a never ending struggle to try to, you know, please as many players uh, people as possible while still staying true to what the original design purpose was of whatever item it is you're balancing whether or not it's a career or a weapon uh, like it's um, balance sort of fringes on the sort of um, fantasy of the weapon not just sort of the strength I mean the strength and how effective it is in certain situations also like come into play with that but you sort of have to you have to balance power with uh, um, like fantasy uh, and, and you know multiple things like that and also take into consideration w uh, what uh, sort of the item you're balancing is has uh, how it works in conjunction with like the rest of the game uh, and, and things like that to, to mention a few but there's like there's a million million different factors uh, to take into consideration when balancing and also in our case and in most cases there is like difficulty to take into consideration as well is like um this uh balance decision uh, decision for this difficulty uh, plays out completely different uh in in another scenario with like uh, you know how a higher difficulty things like that so what i'm trying to say there's a lot to take into consideration and uh, yeah just trying to stay true to your original design purpose so you have an index of all the game knowledge in your head uh yeah it's, um, 
<laughs> oh, we released a Duff blog about the changes for Shade and Sister of the Thorn, which we'll get into later in this stream. But one of the bigger community questions is why Shade? What, what made the team decide to give Shade a WeWork? Um, so <laughs> Shade has uh, always historically been uh, talked a lot about as being one of the stronger players in the game. Um, but very recently, uh, not very recently, but recently uh, we removed the first like critical hit uh, attack of her Clock of Mist talent. -y. And that sparked a huge discussion of her sort of backstab minigame. And a lot of people, you know, find it really fun to do the whole like vanish, critical, backstab, shaming madness. And an equal amount of people find that it's really easy to do and it's destroying a lot of sort of difficult uh, sort of aspects uh, of the game. And uh, yeah, that sort of got us into the whole um, sort of what is the shade actually trying to do with her sort of backstab stealth uh, gimmick. And we decided that we wanted to try to sort of, um, we wanted to make her her mini game, like her niche more readily available outside of just doing huge vanish crit uh, chains to start, try to go to try to sort of spread it out so we could be more readily available and doable. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of why we we started out uh, um, looking at it. Um, if that asks why we did it. Uh, I mean, we took some decisions. Uh, I know we mentioned in the dev blog that we would like we we want to try to make the whole backstabbing more available, and then people obviously asked, "Then why did you remove Vanish?" And that was because uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but she has a new perk called uh, Dagger in the Dark, which makes all melee attacks from uh, stealth uh, critical, and Vanish and that perk wouldn't actually be able to sort of work <laughs> together because it would be too strong. And that's actually sort of the main reason to why it sort of went is because we sort of designed the whole you know, loop of sort of gameplay that she has now in her perks with the whole parry, dodge, insta kill something and get stealth um, loop from her passive. So we just, we that's the reason why that went. Uh, see if it works out way we intend it to be um yeah i mean a rework is, is sort of a harsh and not i'm mean, harsh is probably the wrong word but we, we like gave her more tools and we tried to move the whole because so i mean the the issue first was the so she has a lot of problematic areas but a lot of hard things to deal with was the whole Cloak of Mist. People really like Cloak of Mist and they like Vanish, but uh, the thing we sort of wanted to move away from was that Cloak of Mist wasn't only the talent that sort of made her uh, backstab sort of gameplay uh, available or like doable uh, to a certain degree. It also was the highest DPS talent. So whether you wanted to play Frontline or you wanted to play uh, like the Assassins, gameplay style you like always pick that one and it's really reflected in like the, the pick rates she has one of the most polarized pick rates out of the entire cast uh, when it comes to uh, her her talents uh, and also why we sort of added the whole like perks was we we wanted to make uh, backstabbing gameplay more reliable mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, I know it's quite ironic, and people say, "Yeah, yeah, the parrying, parrying in general is not reliable." But that's that's another issue. Uh, we wanted to make it so, like, if you are invisible and you're going for a backstab, you can almost be certain that you're going to kill them if you're doing uh, charge attack. Uh, the whole vanish uh, sort of mm, it didn't really fit. It's uh, it, it's a lot. I, I hope. Hopefully it doesn't come uh, come off as way to sort of uh, everywhere, but uh, we have an idea that we're we're working towards. 
and hopefully it will be fun. It looks cool to do. Yeah. So what about Sister of the Thorn? What kind of guiding themes did you all follow to help kind of shape her new ults and talents? Yeah, so I mean, Sister of the Thorn, I think, is more word of the, the word sort of rework. Um, since, um, yeah, I mean, ever since release, there's been no questions about her that she has been quite strong and she had she definitely <laughs> has the, uh, a couple of, uh, of problematic talents I will not tell you who's responsible for those but um, yeah um, but yeah so not only that she was very very strong she also she, she felt like she uh, lacked some sort of identity and uh, direction with her like uh, talent tree or just the overall feel um, you got from looking at it it felt like even though she had like a lot of different options and maybe having different options is nice in its own way uh, we felt like it was yeah it could be more sort of in line with what you think that a sort of sister thorn um, is and uh, that's the sort of main reason to why we sort of created the whole poison identity so we sort of we decided that she looked like okay so what is actually sister of the thorn and what do you want to do besides being really really good at killing stuff uh i mean ironically um not ironically but uh, she uh, the intention was always to create a supporting career and that the uh, it went as it went we always also had in mind that she was going to be more um offense oriented mm -hmm. since after all she is a Karelian career and Karelians have expectations on them that they need to kill stuff so she will also like she will support in her own way now she will still pump out the deeps but uh, she will help out uh, uh, her team do it more now so how did you come up with the idea for a push a push old i mean Well, how did we come up with the idea? <laughs> I mean, so we we had this um, not pillar, the design idea that she was like one of her themes was that, was that she would be able to sort of control the flow of combat, and it just it sort of made sense that the wall would be sort of able to to push uh, to push stuff around, and uh, yeah, that. That's how we went about it. it. It sort of went like this. It was very scientific. How about if the wall was able to push stuff? Wouldn't that be cool? And we're like, yes. And then we did it. And then it was cool. And then we we used it. And uh, yeah. Um, I I don't really have <laughs> have more that's, to say about it's, the wall. That, that's, that's that's the design thing. Is 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 it fun to play? Is it cool? Is it balanced? Go. Yeah, I mean, it was on theme for what uh, we wanted to sort of give her strength to be. Uh, so yeah, that, that's where we went with it. So we also reworked Illusionist. Um, how do you how do you see its kind of new form impacting Chaos Waste runs now? A big sigh of relief for most players, <laughs> probably. Yeah, um, I mean, so from the start with the grudge marks is that um, they would have sort of each grudge marks was to sort of have its challenge to go along with it and the sort of challenge for illusionist was to sort of to create chaos uh, maybe a little too much chaos we were okay with uh, initially that um, illusions would actually inherit uh, the sort of attributes of the other monsters because uh, the design goal was that it would create really sort of cool dynamics and uh, like the intention was that yes if you get a really really bad combination like unstaggerable duplicating minotaurs that don't take great range damage you would probably lose unless uh, something miraculous happened uh, but um, yeah it uh, they did they definitely did not need that amount of strength to create chaos. Just the nature of having um, 
four bosses on the screen <laughs> at once creates uh, enough chaos for it to be a challenge. Uh, let's let's go into some some fun questions here. What are you most proud of with this update? Mm, the push wall for Sister of the Thorn. The push it's, wall. Uh, the push wall. It's uh, it's uh, really really fun actually. Do you have any tips for people who want to start a career in game design? Um, I mean, I'm quite uh, quite new to game design in general, uh, so I can only sort of give what I did. Uh, I don't really have ex experience in in hiring game designers or what companies are looking for. Uh, but from like when I talk and I listen, it seems like a lot of game design positions they really value sort of team cohesion I think cohesion but like mm -hmm. if you mesh with the, the sort of the team and you're able to talk you're just generally nice being around while of course sort of having your head in the right space and occasionally coming up with good ideas uh, just you know being able to be a really good team player and sort of understand uh, the field you're working with. I don't know, this sounds really pretentious, but uh, yeah, being able to talk to people uh, and being a good play team player uh, does a lot. Also, it helps to have a lot of friends in the industry. <laughs> so go to game design school because you will find like-minded people or, you know, modding communities does a lot. Design is a team sport for sure, for sure. And we're, yeah. we're happy to have you in the Shark Tank with us. You're doing good. I try. Okay, so do you prefer coffee or tea, and why? Mm, tea, because coffee is really disgusting. What? You can't drink coffee, you get like dad <laughs> breath, like not, not epic. Wow. And finally, who's your favorite Vermintide character and why? Um... Don't kill me, but I really like the engineer. The engineer is my favorite. When it works, I know he's weak, okay? I've seen the threads. I, uh, not I, I mean, <laughs> we will fix him. <laughs> he will, uh, yeah. You no, know, he might even get the old, uh, old radiance back. Who knows? Who has the power to put that in? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so. Let's open up to a couple of questions regarding Shade and Sister of the Thorn rework from the chat. I saw one to start us off. How strong is the push? Can it push monsters? Uh, yeah, so that isn't, uh, that, that's not really hell in the, in the, um, in the tooltip, but it will behave, it, it has strength, so it will be, it will be not as strong for each of uh, the bri breeds, I mean the sort of level of enemies, so it will bring uh, slaves and marauders uh, all the way and then it will sort of lower so uh, storm vermins will get pushed uh, like short a shorter distance chaos world we think it's a minor annoyance and bosses will not give a single damn about your push they will stomp right through it so you have to take into consideration what you are pushing do you see that being a, a new mini game for her? I mean, there is definitely a sort of potential from it. Uh, one sort of really dangerous uh, situation that often arrives in uh, in our game is uh, mixed hordes, or rather, like you have a horde of a lot of slaves, and then you have some armored enemies uh, like sprinkled among uh, them. If you run a push wall through them, you will clear out all the chef. So they will be pushed behind the wall. And now you have time to take out the elites and just the elites. If you place it uh, well enough. So yeah, there is a, there will definitely be a place available to be done uh, with the stone wall. And also, you know, you can shove an entire horde off, uh, off a cliff. That's uh, That's pretty cool as well. Someone asked an important question, is how much friendly fire does it do? Uh, it deals no damage. Uh, none that, that, that of Carillion's... That makes Carillion made sad. You gotta do yeah, it, fire. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, Blood Racer Thicket in its current iteration is quite uh, sort of 
it overshadows a lot of uh, of the initial ideas we had uh, with the thorn wall. So, right, we're sad to say, or not really, but uh, none of the walls options deal damage now. So you won't have a clear uh, sort of DPS king, or I mean, somewhat DPS king. You have the black venom thicket, which will poison them, which will help you take stuff out, but. You have no insta kill nuke 18 chaos warriors in a patrol button so new times ahead and the last question that we have is is the push strength based off of armor or individual for each energy uh, enemy i.e how effective is it against monks and berserkers uh it's per armor class so it should be i don't have it on the top of my head I'll give you somewhat effective versus uh, monks and berserkers. All right, so that's all the questions I have. Thank you so much, Carl. No problem. Take care and have a great Friday. Bye bye. Bye. All righty, so we're going to go over briefly the shade talent changes but before that can we say thank you to carl in the chat the carl the carl not carl franz but the carl and carl did us a solid we had um marcus slotted for this stream and i unfortunately found a uh, fell ill so Carl rushed in and saved the day. I'll do it. I'll do it. So he he did us a solid. He is an actual hero. And any developer that comes on stream with me and puts their face out there is my hero. All right. So let's take a look at Shades and... Uh, Sister of the Thorns update. Let me start the game up here again. The update is not live. The update will be live on the 15th. I love the new skins. The new skins are great. <laughs> what are the properties of my necklace? Like, plus two bravery, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I always get nervous on stream. Alrighty. Where is the game capture device? There we go. Okay, so let's start with Shade. So her main passive has changed to Assassin's Blade, which is 100% additional damage when attacking enemies with melee attacks from behind. Her perk is now Dagger in the Dark, um, which is melee attacks from stealth are always critical. Chat is in the way.
Now Chad is not in the way. <laughs> Go away, Chad. Shoo! All right, so perk one is a dagger in the dark, which is melee attacks from stealth is always critical. Blur, powering an attack as quickly dodging grants killing stealth for a short period. And murderous prowess, which is charge critical backstabs, instantly slay man-sized enemies. For talent two, three, which is exquisite huntress, uh, there's increased duration of the headshot damage buff to 10 seconds, up from five. Talent four, one, This was originally Aerith Kyle's Herald. It's been replaced with Chain Killer, which is successive charge backstabs increase backstab damage by 25% for five seconds. Uh, this effect can stack up to two times. Or two, this was originally vanished. It's now focused slaying. Killing an enemy with a backstab grants cooldown reduction for three seconds. And talent 6-1, this was originally Cloak of Mist, it is now Shimmer Strike. Leaving Infiltrate grants Kirlian Stealth for 3 seconds, and killing an elite or special enemy extends this effect by 1 second. And 6-2, this was originally Shadow Step, and has been replaced with Hungry Wind. So leaving Infiltrate grants Kirlian 10% movement speed and 20% power with the ability to pass through enemies for 10 seconds. Or for 10 seconds. Infiltrate no longer grants bonus damage. Then we're going to move to Sister. You can see my love for Glaive here. So whenever I'm in a community stream and you guys are like, torture yourself with Glaive, it's not really torture for me. I love this weapon. So just, just, just for future reference. So, perk one is Black Venom Maids. Um, melee attacks apply back Black Venom, dealing damage and increasing damage taken by 12% for 10 seconds. Uh, there's Talent 2-2, which is Authority's Delight. So it's been changed to applying bleed when striking poisoned enemies instead of on critical strikes. Talent 2-3, this was originally Isha's Bounty. It's been replaced with Briar's Malice. So casting Thornwake grants Kirillian two critical strikes. Talent 4-2, which is Bonded Spirit. It reduces the cooldown of Radiance by 50%, taking, and taking damage sets the cooldown back two seconds. Talent 4-3, Radiant Inherence. Inheritance, excuse me. Consuming Radiance grants Kirillian and nearby allies 15% power and 5% critical strike chance for 10 seconds. And talent 5-1. Pale Cream's choosing is now called Recursive Toxin. Um, Black Venom can now stack two times. Talent 5-2. This year's Moral Hegs Doom Sight. It's now been replaced with Lingering Black Venom. Critical strikes apply black venom to enemies near the target. 6-1, iron, th iron Bark Thicket now increases the width of the wall. Talent 6-2, this was originally Blood Razor's Thicket and has now been replaced with Tangle Grass Thicket. So thorny vines now erupt from Carillion and travel towards the target targeted area. Enemies hit are now dragged towards the target area. And talent 6-3, Black Venom Thicket. Thorn Wake instead causes roots to burst on the ground, staggering enemies and applying Black Venom to them. Now, let's go through a quick walkthrough of our cosmetics. Nice. Nope.
Okay, now you can hear me. Got it, okay. So, as I was saying, we now have these new premium cosmetics. One for Fortnite, one for Witch Hunter Captain, one for Unchained, one for Waystalker, and one for Ranger Veteran. These will also be releasing on the 15th. So let's start with the Waystalker. This is the Wild Heath Warden. So it's the Sentinel of Aethel Lauren's Wild Border, where ancient waystones contain the Wrath of Hungry Trees. So this is going to be split into two parts. You can get the whole entire outfit, or you can get the hat, which is the Forebearer's Helm, or the skin, which is Herald of the Weave. And while I'm here, let me close the game so you guys don't have to hear that. Ranger Veteran will receive Varagaza. Uh, forgive my dwarf-ish, dwarven. Um, I will butcher these names and I will be written in the Book of Grudges for butchering these names, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. So this is the garb of a dispossessed king doomed to wander the world's edge mountain to search in search of a home he can never reclaim. Again, you can get the set. You can get the hat, Karen, or the skin. I'm gonna butcher this terribly. Vargalvalg. <laughs> I tried. I tried, Barden. I tried. For the foot knight, you have the Templar Herald, armor of a knight charged with carrying Sigmar's message into the distant crusading land of Araby. Judging by its conditions, he was not well received. Uh, you have your hat, which is the griffin crown, or the skin, which is knight griffin. My personal favorite, you have Unchained's Molten Soul. I saw someone in the distance so she is a steam tank now. Yeah, yeah. So, in Skorl, the remnant of a wizard determined to walk the weave of Akshi, mostly filed proof, though the same cannot be said of the wearer. I... Personally, if you get the skin, take a look at the details on it. It's pretty cool. But your hat will be Immolator's Casket, and your skin is a Blazing Sword Remnant. And finally, we have Witch Hunter Captain's Elithus Pilgrimage. Vestiments of a Witch Hunter determined to seek out heretics in distant lands. No word of his success or failure has ever reached the Empire. And you have the Beast Hunter's Hat, which I know everyone has been waiting very patiently for. And the skin at Hellhunter's Harbor. So go out there, get yourself some fashion tied, and strut your stuff in some new cosmetics. Yes, the team did an excellent job with these cosmetics, a really, really excellent job. All right, so let's get into our quick little FAQ. One of the big questions we get is, are we still continuing work on Vermintide when Darktide releases? Yes, we are. We have our whole plan mapped out for the year. We're not dropping Vermintide and being like, okay, Darktide now, I promise we will still be working on Vermintide. That is Salt's hat from the tutorial. The second is, why did the cosmetics move to the Emporium? So we decided it was a little bit cleaner to move the hats to the Emporium. That way they weren't mixed with map and career DLCs. Also, this has helped setting the stage for us to find ways to potentially gift cosmetics to people. So that's kind of the foundations of that. But it was also uh, an organization thing that allowed us to have a little bit of a cleaner steam stale, um, uh, steam, steam store, excuse me, a little bit of a cleaner steam store. So if you're looking for maps and gameplay oriented DLCs, it wasn't mixed up with a bunch of cosmetics. And finally, when will console receive these changes? Console will receive Twitch mode, QOL and cosmetics in April. So March 15th is released on PC. April will be released on consoles.
So next two weeks will be community stream where we will play some Vermintide. Twitch mode will be back so you can help manufacture my doom in the game. And you guys can choose my weapon sets and all that kind of stuff. We are resetting the stream schedules because we did two streams back to back. We will have the community stream two weeks from now. So I will see you in two weeks for the community stream. And until then, I'll be reading Reddit and waiting your feedback when we release March 15th. This is actually signing off. Take it easy, guys. Blessed Sigma, the world drowns in corruption. Your empire is aflame with heresy. The faithful perish, and the wicked multiply. <laughs> Blessed Sigma, lend me your strength. Grant me the will to purge the corrupt, to smite the heretic, to bring hope when hope is lost. <laughs> By the comet and the hammer, I pledge to the coming battle. I vow not to waver and never retreat. To stand tall against the flames of perdition. To drive back the shadow of chaos with your holy light. Finished freeing, have you? Where is your patience, Master Dwarf? Have I ever let you down? Victory favors the faithful. Let us teach them fear. For Sigma! <laughs>